Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. I know plenty of y'all have gone out to the garage, turned on your key to your bike, getting ready to ride, got your helmet on, hit the starter, and you hear that. So here's the question. Does the battery need to be recharged or does it need to be replaced? Well, I don't know yet, but what we're going to do is go ahead and pull the seat, hook a tester to it, go through a couple of testing techniques, maybe try recharging and then see what happens. So if you're ready, let me go grab a couple of tools and we'll get started. Before we get started, let's go through the tools you're going to need to get this little project done. Um, you're going to need a hammer, a decent uh, you know, 3 8 wrench, a 6 millimeter uh, Allen for that, a uh, number 2 Phillips flat blade, a couple of pairs of uh, needle nose pliers, and then on the specialty side, you want to have a voltometer some type of a smart uh, battery charger and you're probably not going to have this piece here. This actually tests the health of the battery so I'd recommend you know running down to the dealership with your battery and have them test it. Certainly they can do that for you. Uh, once you've assembled all this we can get started. All right, first things first to access the battery uh, this one happens to be under the seat as it is on most other motorcycles. Only a couple of bolts holding it on on either side then we'll get the seat out of the way. All right, looks like they've got a power commander hooked up. So let's just Velcro it in, lay it out to the side. Next, let's go ahead and lift out the uh, ECM. And I'm one of those that likes to keep it plugged in. Reason being, these, these uh, little connections are pretty fragile. So I'd just rather pull it up and out of the way than, uh, than disconnecting it. Because basically you just have to get these three Phillips screws out. And then this upper plate can be removed, and then that'll expose the battery. Well, let's just do an initial test just to see uh, what the battery voltage is. I mean, a typical healthy battery should be around 12.8, 12.9. One that's in real trouble is going to be under 12 volts. So let's see where this one ends up. She's actually reading 12.48, but you know, that is real close to fooling me. So what I'm going to do... Let's leave this connected, and we're actually going to try to start it, and we're going to see what kind of voltage drop we get. All right, that dropped down to around 2 volts, so this battery's in serious trouble. It may have an initial voltage that's where it's supposed to be, but I'm betting that the tester is going to verify what we just saw. There's no way it could start this machine dropping with that kind of loss. So let's get it taken out and tested. All right, let's go ahead and get this battery out. A little tip for me, you want to disconnect the negative first, and that'll be the last thing that you connect. Reason being is if this is disconnected and you short out this side, well, guess what? It can't go anywhere. But if this is already connected, well, you're going to complete a circuit right there. So we want to do the negative side first. Then let's go ahead and get that positive side. little trick because this thing's so embedded in there. If you have two pair of needle nose pliers, grab it by the post to get it out. All right, let's carry it over to the bench. All right, let's get it hooked up to our load tester and see what kind of shape this battery's in. All right, with a tester like this, it's actually battery specific, so I actually had to bring up uh, YTX 20L. All right, yeah, I realize on the front out of it it says a uh, GTX, but I, I guess that's their particular model number for a knockoff. You know, because uh, this machine actually came with a UASA, and that's the battery that I'm actually going to test for. So that's what we've got in place. Uh, imagine that it says to replace the battery. Let's see what kind of health. All right, the, the health is zero percent and its charge was you know, right at 80. So yeah, you can charge this battery to death, it's not gonna come back. Uh, I did have the charger up here and I was gonna go ahead and do that just to see what happens, but I guarantee you this is gonna test the same. When you have a zero health on it, it is done. So we need to surface up a new battery, which I just happen to have already out on the bench. Like I said earlier, 
This is the, uh, the OEM. This is what Honda uses. It's a YTX 20 LBS. This is the battery you want to use. We can sell you the battery. The trick is we cannot ship you the electrolyte. So if you order one from us, it's not going to be ready to go. You'll have to go and pick up a, uh, a, a bag of electrolyte to get it filled. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the process, get it charged, get it tested, and then we're going to get it back in the machine. Pretty simple process. Pull this upper cover. I want to pull off this cap, but do not throw it away because this piece right here is actually what seals it back up. So, what we're going to do is plug that in and let it fill. Don't be tempted to try to rock it back or forth or punch a little hole in the top to get the acid to flow in quicker because it will overflow. Because what it's doing right now is filling up all those voids inside of this glass mat. And that takes a little while. So give this a couple of minutes, then we'll throw it on the charger. All right, all the electrolyte has been poured into our battery. And you just want to make sure that you let it sit for about 20 minutes so it actually gets absorbed into the glass mat. Because that's actually what this is, is an AGM type battery, which stands for absorbed glass mat. All right, with that done, now we need to charge it up. All right, a couple of different options here. I mean, we've, at our shop, we've got this really nice uh, smart charger made by Christie. What you can use is just a small smart charger like this one from a battery tender. Bike Master makes one, and I believe that Honda also makes one. And we sell them all on the website. So if you just type in the word chargers, a bunch of, them, a bunch of different ones will come up. If you really did want a uh, commercial grade one, I know that UASA makes one as well. But it's on that website as well if you want to go that route. All right, I'm not going to use the small charger because I have this one here and I'm in a bit of a hurry. So what we're going to do is go ahead and set it up for this particular battery. All right, yours might be different, but what we have to do is actually set what size battery it is. Go ahead and connect up our, uh, our cables. Then set our time for the size battery. We're going to go about an hour. So with that set up, bring it around to 60 minutes, flip it on, and then away she goes. So in about an hour, we'll get everything uh, sealed back up and tested, and then get it back on the machine. And I'll bet you it'll start this time. So see you in an hour. Well, she has finished charging, so let's go ahead and disconnect. Next step, go ahead and get this uh, cap back on, or on period, because uh, I didn't mention in the beginning, but you definitely want to charge it with this off. You don't install this piece until it's completely charged. All right, go ahead. At that point, this battery is sealed back up, so you'll never have to take this off again because this is what they call a maintenance-free battery. All right, just for kicks, let's hook it up. That's where we ended up. 13.10 volts. So I'd say this one's uh, pretty hot and ready to go. And this is actually before delivery. And YTX20. Ready to install. All right, well, that tells me everything I need to know. So let's go ahead and get her in there. Down she goes. I'd already put those little threaded inserts in the post before I laid it in there. All right, let's go ahead and get the positive on first. It uh, snug down with the screwdriver. Then, if you really want to make sure, just give it a little bit more with a quarter inch drive. Because don't want to put too much because you could actually rip that post off. So, just a little bit more, you know, maybe a quarter of a turn will uh, secure it. Now, we can go ahead and do a negative side. Now, on this particular one, we've got this uh, aftermarket power commander. So, don't forget to put the ground back on if you have that or any other accessories on your machine. Same thing, tighten it down. Then about a eight to a quarter turn. 
just to make sure it's tight. And we can get in this upper cover, which actually uh, holds it in place. And if you remember, there was just three Phillips head screws that hold it, hold it down. Let's swing our ECU back in. Now, all that's left is to get the seat on. And it's just those two six millimeter Allens, one on either side. All right, guys, let's uh, flip it on and see what it does. Well, as we could have predicted, you know, she fired right up and had some pretty good authority behind it. Had no trouble spinning this one over. Well, listen, if your battery is in good shape and it's still not starting up, why don't you follow me over to uh, another video that we did that kind of addresses what I call a no-start condition. Maybe we can help you out with that. Well, listen, if you need any of the parts or the tools that we used, maybe one of those chargers, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of have any questions or comments, just leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.